Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy, Hoi again. Good morning everybody. How is everybody doing? It's an okay day here in this little country town that I live in. I don't know what time it may be in the world right now. Hope you're having a wonderful morning slash afternoon slash evening. Whatever. I just want to make this video quickly to talk to you guys. Because I want to talk to you guys. Real talk. <laughs> um, a lot of people wonder how they can make people, other people treat them better. How to make other people be more nice to them. Because, I'll be honest, not a lot of people receive kindness every, uh, every single day. Not a lot of people receive the nice treatment that humans uh, ought to have from time to time. We're not put on this earth to be abused, to be ridiculed, to be singled out every single day. And maybe you're not being treated nicely, you're being mistreated because it's your fault. You are doing people harm, you're insulting people, you're not being nice to people, whatever, it might be your fault. But indifference, when people do not care about you, there's probably a reason why for that as well, because you do not care about other people, and that's why they do not care about you. You gotta give people something to be nice about. Why should, be, why should they be nice to you? <laughs> Real talk. One of the many things in which you can do starting today to be more nice, to be kinder to people and to give people a reason to be nice to you is to remember their names. That's right. Remember people's names and using their names in your conversations in how you address them. Every single human being is entitled to a name. It's a fundamental human right. And I think we can sort of agree, uh, agree on that notion. We're not just stats and numbers. We're just not nameless and faceless. Everybody got an identity. What triggered this thought in me was the current event that happened a couple of days ago of this young woman who went into a Christian school and shot up six people. I hate to say this, but I have to say her name. It's Audrey Hill, it's also a human being. Everybody is entitled to a name. But let's push that aside and I wanna continue with what I wanna say first. Everybody is entitled to a name. I've noticed this in my own life. When I just talk to people, when I just refer to them without any pronouns, without any names, they're not really that close to me. If I just go up to the doctor and I just say, hey, can you chart this medication for my patients? Even though I've seen them every single day, I've messaged them on our own like healthcare system, messaging them, hey, can you go review this patient? Hey, make, making a phone call, hey, can you come up? My patient is really tachycardic or his blood pressure has dropped down to I don't know, 80 over 50. Can you do something about it? What do you want me to do? Do you want us to do hourly vital signs? Whatever. Even though I've seen these doctors many times. They're not really as responsive to me. They're not really that cordial. Um, sometimes they can even be quite abrupt to me. If I if I do not acknowledge this familiarity, this relationship between us, that is of um, acquaintanceship, so to speak. 
I've noticed this change in how people perceive and treat me when I started to use their names. When I see someone for the first time, when I see a new colleagues, and I started using their names, instead of just saying, hey, can you do this, do this for me? Hey, um, can you look after my patients? I started using the name. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Justin. Hey, Chris. How are you today? Hey, Chris, can you... This is what is happening to my patients. Can you do this for me? Suddenly, everybody treated me way better. They started respecting me. They started remembering my name even. I got two names. I go by Bob and I go by Khoi. Khoi is my Vietnamese name. Bob is my English name. I, I picked that, up that name because of what happened in primary school. I just, I just thought it would be cool for everybody to call me Bob. I thought it would be funny. I saw that name in the dictionary on the first day of primary school. And I thought, hmm, that is the most common English name. Right, my name is Bob now. And that's why I'm Bob. So I got two names. And then when I started going into uni, I started going back into my former name, which is Koi. But yeah, I've noticed that when I started using people's name and remembering their names or asking for their names, and started using them in my conversations, there's this familiarity between us. There's this bond. We don't just <laughs> refer to other humans as Uga Booga back in the cavemen day. Even cavemen, they have names for all the people around them. The chief, the cook, the hunter-gatherer, the killer, whatever. I don't know, maybe it's something different. I'm just making this shit up. But yeah, remember people's name and refer to them by their name because there's this unique individuality between us all, but there's also this bond that we are human beings, fellow human beings, and we have names. We are not just slaves. They are not below you. They're not above you. They, they aren't, we, we, we share the same right that, that we are entitled to a name, but I'm rambling on way too much. I wanna talk about Audrey Hales. I wonder how much of this hatred, this pent up anger, this frustration that this depraved human being, this sadistic killer was going through when other people do not accept her or his identity. And I see this in my own life as well. I see some of my friends who are in the LGBTQIA plus community suffering the same sentiment of people not recognizing their chosen identities. Let's be honest, biologically, you are what you were assigned at birth, but I do acknowledge that people sometimes can feel disenfranchised. People can feel like what they were given at birth do not match up with what they want to be. And I've matured a bit and I do not think that these people deserve the hate that they are getting nowadays. Even though they are wrong, I have to be firm on this. They are wrong and this is a mental health disorder. To be gender dysphoric is a mental health illness. To be body dysmorphic you're not happy with what you were given i'm not happy with being a short motherfucker i'm not happy with being an asian but this is what i was given okay i don't go on great lengths to try to exterminate to destroy all those who oppose me no i'm saying you have gender dysphoria. I'm saying you have body dysmorphia. You have a mental health illness. 
please go seek help. I'm saying this out of love to you all. And if you want me to refer to you as a she, her, I will. I will. If your name is no longer Audrey, but you are Aiden, okay, you are Aiden. But in my heart, I'll be praying. And I pray that you find this inner peace soon within yourself to come to accept yourself. I don't care about Christianity in, in this sense, okay? I don't care what God is saying and what we should be doing to lead by example. I don't care. I want you to find peace in your soul as a trans, as a gay, as a lesbian, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? Remember that if you're still feeling this gender dysphoria, it's for a reason. It's because you cannot accept yourself and you want to change. But you have to, you have to change this mindset. You have to accept yourself. This is what you were given at birth. You can do certain things to become the best version of yourselves, but you cannot change who you are, okay? And I say this out of love, not out of hate. I want you to find this inner peace within you. Anyways, guys, that's all for today. I hope you're doing well. Stay strong. God bless. And keep grinding, keep hustling. Don't ever get up.